Having someone else pick out your groceries and deliver them to your house is a convenience some people are willing to pay for. According to the website Statista, roughly 150 million Americans have now used online grocery shopping. A survey of those who did shop for food online in 2022 found that about 11% of them did most of their food shopping this way. So, how much will you pay to skip the store? And are there ways to spend less when you shop for food online? We've got the answers. I'm Herb Weisbaum, the Consumer Man, a contributing editor at Checkbook.org. Welcome to Consumerpedia. At Checkbook.org, we're the nonprofit that helps consumers select services, avoid trouble, and save money. Because we don't accept any advertising or take money from any business we recommend, you can rely on Checkbook.org to be completely independent and objective. Now, here's the host of Consumerpedia, America's consumer expert, the consumer man, Herb Weisbaum. In this episode, we're going to look at the pros, cons, and costs of grocery delivery services. Which services rate the best with checkbook subscribers? How much do the prices vary? Plus, tips to help you get the best prices if you do shop this way. Here with all that great advice, Checkbook's executive editor, Kevin Brassler. Hello, Kevin. Hey, Herb. So, grocery delivery has been available for a number of years, but I don't think it really took off until the pandemic, right? Yeah, I mean, once we were all kind of, you know, rightly scared to go to the store, grocery stores had realized that it, to remain relevant, they had to adapt. Uh, if they were selling food and they didn't have curbside pickup or delivery options, they were in big trouble. And I was actually, I was quite surprised how quickly some stores and chains so quickly shifted gears in terms of scaling up their delivery options. Fortunately for them, most supermarket companies had already launched delivery services before COVID hit. I remember in 2017, Amazon made huge waves by buying up Whole Foods and the grocery industry became really worried that this, you know, this thousand pound gorilla of grocery delivery would take over. So even before the pandemic, grocery delivery was widely available, uh, at least from the big chains. For many companies, though, it was just a side hustle, something they invested in as an attempt to kind of safeguard against Amazon's supposed invasion here, right? Right. So most grocery stores, they didn't have to invent a way to deliver groceries. They just had to really scale up what they had already had in place. So today, where we are is a lot of these big supermarket chains have their own delivery programs, but there are also these third-party companies that will do the delivery for you. Yeah, so the really big companies, Walmart, Albertson Safeway, and Kroger own stores, they all offer delivery. Their own personnel fills orders, and then they bring them to you. But there are also third-party websites and apps like Instacart and Shipt. Uh, Shipt is actually owned by Target. And a lot of the smaller chains and independent stores, they don't have their own delivery services. They've contracted with these third-party apps. And in some cases with Instacart, they're just putting up with Instacart's gig workers coming in and assembling orders and delivering them. These third-party apps, of course, also saw a lot of new investment during the pandemic. Uh, a lot of so-called experts predicted that deliveries and these you know, curbside pickups would be the new way everyone would buy food, that this would just take over and the brick-and-mortar stores wouldn't be needed anymore. By the way, as an aside, as someone who does his own grocery shopping, you're in the aisles fighting against these gig workers who are there looking at their cell phones and trying to match up the order. And I just want a yogurt and I got to reach around these people who are clogging up the dairy aisle or whatever. But you know, they are taking the place of, say, four shoppers, though, sometimes, too. So if it weren't for the gig workers there, there would be other shoppers also trying to find the variety of yogurt that they want to buy. And All right, I'll buy that. So from the news stories I've read, the demand for grocery delivery has stalled or maybe even declined in some cases. It has. I mean, this this took off for a while, but for a lot of consumers, uh, you know, we just stopped using it. Some people, though, they fell in love with delivery and they fell in love with curbside pickup and they will never go back. I mean, they are done wandering the aisles for good. But for many shoppers, they've returned to the stores. They've returned to going into stores and buying their own food. There's for sure still enough delivery and pickup business that grocery stores won't drop those services altogether. But we didn't see this permanent shift that some people thought we might see. So I can understand why someone might want the convenience of grocery delivery. I guess I can really understand it if it's canned goods or toilet paper or paper towels or whatever. But I personally still want to go to the store and pick out my fruits and veggies. It's sort of like a date with my wife now. We go and do this. Even if it means waiting in line at the one check stand that's open or using the self-checkout that is like stacked up like O'Hare Airport. But other shoppers are not like me, maybe. I don't know. 
Yeah, you and I, we've talked about this before, that you and I are both in this, you know, I'd rather do my own shopping camp when it comes to groceries. I completely understand those who like grocery delivery. I I get that it's a huge time saver. It's especially helpful for those who have disabilities where they can't get to stores very easily. And for those who lack transportation, they now have lots and lots of grocery options in terms of the store selection uh, that didn't have before because a lot of these grocery delivery businesses, they'll ship orders, you know, region wide. And so you can be pretty far away from a grocery store that it may have been a hassle to get to before. Well, now they'll bring the groceries to you. So I do understand that. I do understand that's a time saver. But I like going in, in, into the stores myself. I mean, I like picking out my own stuff. And also, I just I like getting out of the house. I mean, I spend for my work. I'm in front of the computer all day, every day, and I'd rather not spend another hour uh, in front of a computer assembling a grocery delivery order. I'd rather just go to the store, even if it means braving the crowds and to do it myself. But if you find, though, that, you know, going to the grocery store is a chore and a hassle, uh, you know, having your avocados, Doritos and whatever delivered, it'll be a lovely time saving option for you once you've set up your accounts with these places, once you've made the lists you will find them a big time saver. But again, they're not for everyone. Uh, and that's what's you know really held back grocery delivery from taking over the entire industry, uh, which is what people thought it might be able to do. So this is not exactly breaking news, but in most cases, you are paying more for having someone bring those groceries to your door. How much does this convenience cost? We're going to talk to Kevin about that next. This is Consumerpedia, powered by Checkbook.org. Checkbook has customer ratings and evaluations for supermarkets and grocery delivery services in these seven metro areas. Boston, Chicago, Philadelphia, Seattle, San Francisco, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Washington, D.C. The ratings are available with a subscription. Information about the pros, cons, and costs of having someone else do your shopping is free for everyone. If you live in one of the seven areas and haven't joined Checkbook yet, check us out. Get your free 30-day subscription at checkbook.org slash consumerpedia. And if you like what you've heard, we hope you'll become a supporter by using the link at the bottom of the show notes to make a small contribution each month. Kevin, grocery delivery is clearly convenient, but it's almost always more expensive. Talk about that if you would. Yeah, it's going to cost more. And, and really, the main reason is, is that you know none of these companies have really invested in centralized warehouses and distribution centers. They're almost all doing what you and I do, Herb, to buy our groceries, which is that we walk up and down the aisles and we pick out our stuff and we put it in a cart and then we drive it home. And that's what these companies are doing. The supermarkets themselves or the third party delivery companies, they're sending their employees or gig workers up and down the aisles of nearby stores, gathering your stuff and then bringing it to you. So that's not really an efficient operation. They're simply transferring the labor of grocery shopping from you to their workers, and someone has to pay for that. It seems like they could have a better working model for how this happens, but they don't at this point in time. And Checkbook has found that these delivery prices can be pretty steep. Yeah, so we shop grocery delivery businesses in the seven metro areas where Checkbook provides ratings of local services. To do that, we used a market basket of 154 common grocery items. Uh, It's the same price survey we use to shop supermarkets in those regions for their in-store prices. We do that every few years where we're comparing supermarkets and grocery stores, uh, the different options for costs. We found that when we use that survey for delivery services, that for an illustrative family of four, you know, that spends $250 at the average priced grocery store, getting that order via delivery would usually cost $40 or more compared to buying in store. And sometimes we found they'd pay $80 or more. They're always going to end up paying more because of gratuities. Even if they can get their orders for a really low per order price of $5, they're still going to pay more because of gratuities. Are you expected to tip? Please do tip. These order fillers and these drivers are paid very little and rely on gratuities. We found that a common tip amount for grocery delivery is about 15% of your order total. And do all the apps and online programs allow you to add a tip? And unfortunately, not all of them. We found that some services you know, definitely accommodate tipping better than others. We found with a few, there's no way to do it while ordering that you actually have to tip with cash. At some stores, Checkbook found that the extra cost for delivery was very small, only a few dollars per order. That might make it worthwhile. Especially the case with large grocery chains. Uh, some of them only charge 3 to $8 per delivery, and, and that's it. So Walmart, for example, which offers very low prices for groceries, also offers great deals on its delivery fees. Uh, we found they were 
quite low. Same with, you know, stores that are owned by the big supermarket chains like Albertson, Safeway, and Kroger owned stores. But you pay those low fees, those three to five to eight dollar fees per order, only if you order through those supermarkets delivery services. If you turn around and order instead through Instacart or Shipped, we often found that your costs dramatically get increased. We found that, for example, that buying groceries through Shipped from Harris Teeter, which is a Kroger owned chain that operates here in the Washington DC area where I live, doing so added about 23% to our grocery bill. And that was before the tip. I mean, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. And it was some of these, especially these third party services, we found that we'd pay $80 or more per order by ordering through some other way. So for example, if I bought through Harris Teeter's own service, uh, it would only cost us about $5 per order extra, but that's also plus tip. So with all of these costs, you know, tipping is additional. So I'd assume these third-party apps just mark up the store's prices to make it work for them? Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't, and sometimes they disclose that they're doing that better than others. Uh, you're always going to pay a little bit extra for deliveries, right? Even if you find a place, you know, Walmart and, and these other stores where they're offering delivery for very low fees, you know, a flat fee of $5 or so, you're always going to pay more because of that fee and because of tipping. But sometimes, you know, these third parties, they, the, the costs really add up quickly because in addition to their annual fees and delivery fees and service fees and gratuity, uh, they're also marking up the prices that are offered in stores. So how much more you'll pay for delivery depends heavily on the stores where you're shopping and which service they use. Uh, it's not always easy to learn whether or not, for example, Instacart or Shipt is marking up prices in addition to charging their usual service fees. Instacart makes it even more complicated because sometimes it charges lower markups and fees to customers who sign on for its annual membership. So if, if you're not a member, if you haven't paid that annual fee, you may pay a lot more for the groceries themselves than you would if you had signed up for it. It's not really easy to figure this out. So let me ask you about that. If this is a way you are going to grocery shop, does it make sense to sign up and take part in that annual delivery membership? Yeah, lots of stores offer this where you, know, you get reduced fees or maybe free deliveries if you sign up for their annual membership. We found that it's almost always if you're going to take regular deliveries, go ahead and sign up for it. You know, Shipped also offers memberships, as does Instacart, for $99 a year. But unlike Instacart, Ship doesn't charge additional per order fees. But like Instacart, you have to watch out for these big price markups with Shipped. I will say, though, that the nice thing about Instacart and Shipped is that you can place orders at multiple stores. Many grocery shoppers we find these days shop at more than one store. And so if you like to get your produce from one place and your non-perishables from another and your meats or something like that from a different store, having a membership with these services, you could shop at multiple stores without having to go through the process of setting up separate accounts with each of those stores. So is one home delivery option a better service than others? Checkbook surveyed consumers, and we're going to talk to Kevin about what we found straight ahead. This is Consumerpedia, powered by Checkbook.org. Consumerpedia Fast Facts According to the Food Marketing Institute and Industry Trade Group, the average supermarket in the U.S. carries about 36,000 items. About 7% of all grocery items are sold online. The average transaction per customer is $42 in-store and $113 online. About 30% of all customers use self-checkout. So Kevin, you and I see a lot of negatives to grocery delivery, enough that we're really not interested in doing it, but there are some positives for a lot of people who may be listening. For most shoppers, the grocery deliveries are about saving time, not money. Exactly. For a long time, very few stores offered grocery delivery at all, but the ones that did offer it made it a pain to use their services. I mean, you had to be home during a specific delivery time window that may have stretched for three hours or more. That's all mostly changed. These stores are offering far more convenient delivery times. You don't necessarily have to be home when they do deliver. So especially for busy people, deliveries can be a big time saver. But of course, you have to figure out what you want. You can't just see the store on the way home pop in and say, oh, yeah, I need a gallon of milk. Yeah, I mean, you still have to make a list. And for many shoppers, that's an obstacle. You can't just pop in and throw whatever looks good into your cart, which is what I do sometimes. And while you don't have to be home when your grocery delivery shows up, you know, you'll want to be close to being home. You want to pick a convenient time for you to make sure your stuff doesn't melt or spoil or disappear. So it does require advanced planning. We also found, though, with most websites, it takes a lot of work to build a list of products you often buy. But once you've done that work, 
making grocery delivery orders. I mean, it gets way easier. You just pull up your list and click on the things you need, uh, your list of things you often buy. But that initial list building is pretty tedious at first. Uh, and we also found, our researchers found, that stores inventory technology has drastically improved in the last few years. And so you don't have to worry so much about things being out of stock that you want to buy. But sometimes it is difficult to find things. Like we search for Brussels sprouts. Uh, and at some stores, when we spell it the right way, it wouldn't show up. We'd have to misspell it as Brussels sprouts to find it. Yes, it is Brussels sprouts. <laughs> yeah, it is it, it, Brussels sprouts. <laughs> right. And for certain varieties of apples, we'd search for a specific variety like Gala apples and it wouldn't show up. And then we just search for apples and oh, there it was. It just didn't make sense why the search string didn't work. Mm hmm. And I'd say worst of all, when we did this price shopping, our researchers will tell you these websites, some of them were so slow. I mean, it, sometimes it took minutes for one page to load uh, and it would have been faster, we decided, to just run to the store and buy all the stuff we needed rather than stare at this <laughs> slow loading screen uh, for hours. And it was that way no matter you know which researcher tried the website. We'd say, well, maybe it's your connection problem, right? So a different researcher would try it. They'd have the same problem. And so uh, that was really annoying. We were also really annoyed when we used Instacart and some other uh, grocery store websites that... To find the thing we need, we'd have to scroll through a bunch of sponsored ads, a bunch of sponsored items. Uh. They, you know, got paid extra to offer us, and and also, you know, featured recipes and ads for what others bought. I mean, you know, we just wanted to find that box of Kleenex. Just show us the box of Kleenex that we searched for, so we can <laughs> click on it and buy it. And that was really frustrating for us. Well, you gave us a whole shopping list of problems, but anything else you can think of? I'd also say that it, on. On some of these sites, really at many of them, the items descriptions were just way too vague, like especially for produce. I mean, it would show jalapeno peppers, but you know, we didn't know what we were buying. Were we buying a pound of them, a single pepper, or a little bag of them? I mean, there was nothing there often to indicate what we'd get. And so actually when we were doing the shopping, we'd actually have to place an order to see what we were going to get. We'd have to weigh it to figure out, you know, how much we were buying there of that product. Uh, that made it a lot more trouble, for, especially for produce sometimes, than it was worth in terms of shopping for groceries. Something that would concern me is the substitution. I want this spaghetti sauce and they pick another spaghetti sauce. How do they deal with that? Yeah, I mean, it's a big issue for me too. I mean, I want to pick up my own stuff. Uh, even for non-perishable, sometimes I want to pick it up because what if what I want isn't there? How do I indicate what substitution I want? want. Mm -hmm. uh, a big problem with this really is that, you know, a lot of times grocery stores, grocery delivery businesses, when they don't have what it is you want, they don't bring you anything. And then you end up having to go to the store all over again anyways, right? Because you didn't get the one thing you needed to make for dinner the next night. Jeez. I will say, though, on the other hand, you know, one big plus of shopping online for groceries is that it can drastically cut back on your impulse buys. I mean, once you're organized and you have a list of stuff you often buy, it can save you time. And also the big benefit is you just click through and get the things you really need. And you may not be grabbing the chips on the end caps of the aisles. You yep. know, a big problem for me when I go to the grocery store is that my kids are often with me. Uh, and they're always just, you know, throwing stuff in the cart, right? Always mm -hmm. adding stuff to the cart. And I'm a sucker for it. I'm like, if you're going to eat it, fine, put it in. But it does increase your cost. The, you know, my kids especially are big on impulse buy. So uh, doing grocery delivery orders or picking up curbside or whatever, placing your order online, it might cut back on this extra cost of just seeing something that looks good to put in your cart and, and then never eating it or it's junk food. Sounds like uh, you need to have the uh, parent-daughter talk about impulse shopping one of these days. I've had it, and, and it, it, it was <laughs> ineffective, Herb. Okay. <laughs> All right. A couple other questions. What if the bananas are brown and the apples are mushy or they bring you the wrong kind of pasta sauce? What, what do you do then? Yeah, so these stores and, and delivery services, they do guarantee these orders, right? That if they deliver you something and it's spoiled or it's not what you wanted, they'll give you a refund for that amount. But, you know, that's not a terribly convenient arrangement either. You know, now you still have to replace the item that didn't work out. And if that's what you were planning on using to make for dinner that night, well, then now you have to go to the store anyways. And that, you know, the advantage of grocery delivery itself there gets removed. I think a lot of these stores, though, I, I'm not sure they've gotten better about delivering rotten stuff or stuff that spoils too quickly. We still get a lot of complaints about that. 
but they have at least gotten better at substitutions. You can usually indicate, you know, for each item you're looking for, especially critical items, stuff where you're going to make something for dinner with that ingredient, a substitution if they don't see it. And your favorite super shopper, the consumer man, would like to know, can I still use my coupons and special offers and that kind of thing? You can. And and with some of these sites, sometimes you'll actually see extra offers. You'll see these digital coupons pop up. It may be offers that you get online and, and not elsewhere. So overall, you're going to see, in general, you're going to see the same types of sales that you would in store. The problem, though, is that, as we mentioned, that when you're shopping through these third parties, Sometimes they're marking up grocery prices and it's not clear they're doing so. Uh, You're not going to be aware that you're going to pay a lot more for using their service for the food itself than you would if you went to the stores. So the bottom line, Checkbook surveyed consumers for their ratings of delivery services. Did any of the chains or companies that do this stand out to you? Surprisingly, no. Uh, When we survey our own members about things like, you know, quality of fresh produce and quality of meats, uh, when we survey them about buying in store, we see huge differences from chain to chain. But for grocery delivery services, you know, the high scoring chains still tended to get higher ratings for the most part, but consumers in general rated grocery stores, grocery delivery services about the same across the board for deliveries. That is to say that really none rated particularly high. The biggest complaints we get from consumers about grocery deliveries is that they're receiving lousy produce or they're missing items. They're getting produce that they wouldn't have selected. They would have selected something better. They would have dug through that big bin to find the right stuff. We also get complaints things aren't available. Some services are better than others. It seems like it's substituting the good items, the right items, as opposed to not bringing you the thing itself. So overall, grocery delivery customers are less satisfied with the stores and the services they're using than those who are shopping in store. It's almost like we have two camps here. We have the camp that you and I are in, Herb, where we'd rather just go to the stores, we'd rather just deal with it ourselves, And then you have the camp of people who just hate the grocery store and see this as a massive time saver, uh, and they'll never go back. Got to tell you a funny story. I used to go grocery shopping with my father-in-law. He was in the produce business. And when it came to picking out a melon, we would be in the melon aisle. He'd pick up a cantaloupe and he'd (laughs) tap it and he'd smell it and he'd thump it and he'd look at it. And it's like, Bob, are we going to buy this melon and eat it or are you going to marry it? I mean, like, what's the deal here? So (laughs) there are people who just want to shop that way. Yeah, yeah, and I don't blame them. And one of the reasons I take my kids to the grocery store with me is they can't complain about the quality of the blueberries I bring back home, right? Like, I have them go pick them out. And if they're if they're not up to their standards or whatever, then it's their problem. They're the ones who picked up the blueberries. It seems like the grocery industry has invested a lot of money in this. Do you think they're going to invest more, maybe make it more easy to use, better websites, better choices, uh, et cetera, et cetera? You think this is where they're headed? Yeah, it's really hard to say. I think that, you know, obviously Instacart and Shipt have a massive interest in continuing to make their websites easier to use, faster, uh, more accessible. The grocery stores themselves, you know, it kind of remains to be seen. I mean, we've seen some even somewhat large chains really just say, you know, we're just going to hand all this off to Instacart, for example. I mean, you know, Costco has largely done that already. They've just decided that, you know, it's a hassle for them to try to manage. So they'd rather have a third party do so. So long term, I don't know. I don't see this probably as a huge growth industry for supermarkets. I think they've probably captured the audience they can for this and, and this is what they're going to get out of it. Now it's up to them to decide whether or not it's worth to continue to invest in it. Got it. But I have been surprised. And we, we've we discussed here that my surprise that these businesses haven't invested in centralized warehouses. And in fact, the few businesses around the country before the pandemic that operated that way, there were a few dedicated grocery delivery services like Peapod, for example. And there was one in the Minneapolis area called Coburn's. They all went out of business during the pandemic because all of a sudden their big market share, they were kind of the only game in town for a long time, went away. Everyone was now offering grocery deliveries and they just couldn't keep up. You know, we had not seen this movement towards a centralized model at all. It's very decentralized. As you said, Herb, you run into the gig workers up and down the aisles of your own store. It's not as if they have a different place to go to shop for groceries where they might be able to you know, more efficiently collect the orders. No, they're in the same store as we are. Yeah, it's very, very strange. Well, I think we're done our shopping trip, Kevin. So let's uh, let's head to checkout and say goodbye. Sounds great. Well, that's it for this episode of Consumerpedia. You can subscribe to us on Apple or Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. That way, you won't miss an episode. Remember, we release new ones every other Thursday. Another way you can support this show is to follow us on Consumerpedia on Facebook and Instagram, and at MyConsumerpedia on Twitter. I'm Herb Weisbaum. Thanks for listening.
Consumerpedia is a public service of Checkbook.org. We're a unique nonprofit that helps you save money and make smarter choices. You can count on Checkbook to help you find the best services and avoid the worst with local ratings that are accurate and unbiased. If you live in or around these seven cities and haven't joined Checkbook yet, check us out. Boston, Chicago, Philadelphia, Seattle, San Francisco, Minneapolis, St. Paul, and Washington, D.C. To get your free 30-day subscription, go to checkbook.org slash consumerpedia. If you like what you've heard, we hope you'll become a supporter by using the link at the bottom of the show notes to make a small contribution each month. Consumerpedia, empowering consumers to save money and make smarter choices.